and might and is one of the Allah's beautiful names. Commenting on this verse, Al-A'mash says they won't uh, wrongfully insert names irrelevant to those of Allah. Recorded okay. Okay. So sisters, here the, the chapter talks about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, what is the relationship between this chapter and Kitab Tawheed? The author wants to tell us. Uh, uh, okay, now I'm starting the explanation. In this chapter, the author no sound. Someone is writing no sound. Okay, so sister, maybe this is from your side. طيب. So the author wants to tell us from this chapter that uh, we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names. It is not allowed to go to the idols. It is not allowed to go to the graves, to anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through uh, these things. So we should, we should direct our dua, invocation, supplication, our dua toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names. And when we speak about this chapter, uh, I think we spoke this about this previously. At tawassul. What does it mean at tawassul? To, to reach from Lord Wasila, to reach to some something. So now we want to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want our dua to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means to be accepted. There are three ways to have wasila. Uh, wasila. Uh, number one, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names and attributes. Like this ayah in our chapter. And to Allah belong the best names. So invoke him by them. So this is number one. Okay. When you invoke, when you make dua, you should invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his, by his names. How? Ya Allah, irhamni. Oh Allah, have mercy on me. Ya Allah, Shfini, oh Allah, cure me. So I am using the name Allah. I invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his great, sorry, the greatest name, Allah. طيب. Or other names, you can use other names. And you should be careful. It is very nice, very important that you you, you need to match the, na the, the, the names with the dua that you are doing. For example, when your dua is about the cure, you choose the name Ashafi. When your dua is about your sins, you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure your sins, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the name. Which name, sisters? Al Ghafur, yes. What else? If I want Allah to forgive my sins, which names we can use? Al Ghafur, Al Ghafar, Al Afu, Al Tawab, Al Rahman, Al Rahim. Yes, yes, great, great, sister. This is very important. Important in your dua. This means, sisters, when you are invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you understand what you are saying. But for example, I noticed some imam, especially in Ramadan, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the forgiveness and they use the name Al Jabbar. You know, Jabbar is a strong name. Okay, Al Jabbar, yeah, and the one who defeats the kuffar and the, the tyrants. Okay, this is one of the means of, means of Jabbar. Okay, or uh, yani, uh, I need the victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy the Jews who are killing our brothers in Gaza or, uh, or Allah destroy the, the, the disbelievers who are torturing the Muslims everywhere. Okay, so use the name uh, Al Qahar, okay, or Al Qadir, or uh, you know, Al Qadir, Al Aziz. We use the strong names, uh, so uh, this is one thing. The second is to uh, invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your good deeds. Tawassul ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi amalika saliha. Okay, and this is very important, sisters, that when I invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want my dua to be strong. I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept my dua. So we mentioned number one, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his attributes. Right? Number two, your good deeds. Like what? Uh, oh Allah, because we, uh, we are believers, we believe in you, so forgive us our sins. So it's also one of the things, allowed things uh, from the Quran and Sunnah to use, to mention your good deeds. 
to mention your good deeds. Okay, and there is a long story. The three people who were walking, then there was rain. They entered inside the cave. Then a, a big stone uh, st uh, closed the door of that cave. So everyone was asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala what, what, with uh, a sincere deed. Okay, the third way in your dua is to be stronger that you ask someone who is righteous. A good Muslim or a good Muslima, you tell him, please invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me. You go to someone uh, alive, okay, present, uh, and you think, we, of course, we are not sure if he is righteous or not, but apparently he is a righteous person, and we tell him, please make a dua for us. Please make a dua for us. Able, yes. Hey, Hadar, Qadr, yes. Hey, alive, Hadar, present, Qadr, able. Okay. Like the uh, hadith uh, during the time of Umar Khattab, he called Al Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala, an. Yes, have power to do that, which means able. Like uh, when Umar, radiallahu ta'ala, called Al Abbas, okay, and he said, We used to ask the Prophet Hassan to make dua for us, listisqa. Uh, Asking for rain. So now, uh, now Abbas, sorry, the Prophet Hassan passed away. So now we are asking Abbas. And this is a very sensitive point. People misunderstand this concept and people misguided. Okay, so what do you notice in this hadith? That Umar mentioned that we were telling the Prophet Hassan, all the Prophet Hassan were doing dua for us. But now he passed away. We are asking Abbas, all Abbas, come and make dua for us. So no problem with that. So for example, you tell you think that your mother is a good woman, mashallah, she's doing tahajjud, she's hijabi, she's giving charity, she's kind, tayyib. So you tell your mother, please make dua for me. Tomorrow I have an exam or um, uh, I am pregnant. Maybe you tell your mother, no, I am pregnant. Please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me to make uh, to, uh, my pregnancy and my giving birth easy. No problem with that. Okay, but we need to be careful, sisters, that uh, yani, we should not ask any, yani, everyone we meet, please make dua. Okay, this is, subhanAllah, I noticed this is common. This is common uh, in the, yani, some of the Asian countries. Okay, uh, when they meet, uh, maybe this is the first time in my life, the only time. Okay, please make dua. Okay. Do you know who am I? Am I Muslim, kafir, good Muslim, bad Muslim, praying, not praying? They don't know anything. Just as a practice, make dua. No, we should not do like that. It is not sunnah. If you know someone, okay, he's, you think you think he's righteous, so you tell him the dua, to make dua for him. So, And leave those who practice deviation concerning his names. Here, the scholars mention Al-Ilhad. And the, yani, there is, a, nowadays we are using the, the term Al-Ilhad. The translation is atheism. Atheism. Okay. It totally, 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 it is different than what is mentioned by the scholars. Okay. Now, what do you understand by Ilhad, the word Ilhad, atheism? Uh, we mean those who don't believe in the existence of God. There is no ilah. But when you come to the books, Islamic books, okay, I mean the old books, uh, uh, we, you speak about the word al-ilhad, for example here, وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَاءِ الْإِلْحَادِ which means going astray in the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. طيب. What are the ways, the deviant ways, in believing in the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names not proven by the Quran or authentic sunnah. This is a kind of ilhad. Okay, like Allah is wajib al wujud, Allah is al qadim, Allah is al illa al fa'ila. Okay, like the philosophy people who study philosophy, they are giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names not mentioned the Quran or sunnah. This is a kind of ilhad. Okay, we are in chapter 50, sisters. Another type of had to derive names for the idols from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like what is mentioned here, they derive the name Al-Uzza 
from Al Aziz. They derive the name Mana uh, uh, from Al Manan. They derive the name uh, Allat from Al Ilah. You know, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Ilah. Allah and Al Ilah. Okay, these are names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is Ilhad, this is deviations in the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, this is number two. What are the types? Uh, what are the types of uh, Ilhad? Uh, number three, I hope that you are writing with me, sisters. Uh, yes, to negate the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to deny the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like one of the deviant six, Jahmiya. Okay, Al Jahmiya, which is known that, that they deny the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has 19, 99 names, more than 99 names? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't have these names. Why? Because if we claim that Allah has names, it means Allah is not one. Allah is one. So he should have only one name. So this is totally wrong. And number four, to prove the names without attributes. So they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ar-Rahman bila rahma, Al-Ghafoor bila maghfirah, Al-Sami' bila sam'. Okay, so they are going astray regarding the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they prove the names. Allah is Ar-Rahman Rahim, the most merciful, yes, but without mercy. Allah is the oft forgiving, yes, but he is not forgiving. This is Allah also a deviation in the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, also, uh, giving the Names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, this is deviation. We should we should keep the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unique for him. Except what is allowed, uh, proven by the Quran or Sunnah. Okay, like Al Aziz, Al Malik, Al Kareem. These are mentioned for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this chapter, sisters, about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should follow the Sunnah. Okay. No, no, we're not uh, not necessary with the Abdul. I, I can't name my son Kareem. I can name my son Aziz. No problem with that. Okay. Some names without without Abdul. Without Abdul. Okay. So this chapter about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we should invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names or his attributes or his uh, the the, the name uh, our deeds, or we ask the righteous people with the three ways. And also another point that the kuffar, the kuffar use they put the their idols as uh, intercessors between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is haram. So this is the chapter, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, this is, if you remember, when we started the book of this book, this book mainly talks about Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. The name of Allah, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his worship. Okay, and if you like to go in details about Tawheed al Asma al Sifat, if you like to know more about names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you should study Al Aqidah al Wasatiyah, Al Aqidah al Wasatiyah by Shaykh Islam al Taymiyyah. We go to the next chapter, chapter 51. Chapter 51. The prohibition of saying, Peace be on Allah. Nahi'an. قول السلام على الله. ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه narrated we performed prayer along with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. We use we used to say peace be on Allah from his servants and peace be on so and so. There open the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said don't say peace be on Allah for he himself is peace. Read by Bukhari or Muslim. Thank you. Here, what is the point, sisters? You know, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is As-Salam. Okay, what is the meaning of As-Salam? As-Salam, which who, who the one who is giving peace, and also As-Salam means he's free of 
يعني مستيكس اوكي نمبر 1 the name as-salam means the one who is giving peace oh Allah you are as-salam give us peace grant us peace طيب also peace as so sorry the, the name as-salam which is which means as-salim min al-naqa'is okay he is free of mistakes subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so yes page 379 I'm in page 379. Okay? 379. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a salam. Tayyip. What do you understand, sisters, when I start with you saying, As-salamu alaykum. What do you understand from that? Peace be upon you. Which means, don't worry. I'm giving you peace. Okay, be be secure, feel secure, feel safe. Yes, it is a dua, it is a dua, yes, it is a prayer. It is a, a supplication. But what do you understand from that? Okay, yani imagine, imagine, if you are in a non-Muslim country, and if you are in a non-Muslim village, okay, imagine you live in, uh, yani in, uh, in one of the European countries which are uh, anti-Islam. Yesterday or the day before, before, I did someone who's reading, uh, writing, Allah alam, this is right or wrong, but he, he's say, saying that and uh, the countries which don't permit for the niqab. Niqab is impermissible in these countries. Okay, uh, he mentioned some countries, I, uh, I think one of them, Austria, uh, I don't know if it is right or not. Okay, France. So imagine you are in a non-Muslim country, anti-Islamic, and in your corner or in your village, um, the whole community is non-Muslim. And you fear to walk outside, subhanAllah. You know, I met one, one brother who came from America. I met him in Medina also. I was in Medina last week. So uh, yeah, he said, no, I cannot leave my, my wife to go outside, to walk outside alone. She is niqabi and she is not safe. Subhanallah. So imagine you are in this place. Then you find someone saying, Assalamu alaikum. What do you feel? You feel the comfort, you feel the peace, you feel the security, you feel the safety. Subhanallah. So this is the meaning of Assalamu alaikum. And also, it, which means giving you peace and which means may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from the mistakes. So now, when you come to the hadith, Abdullah Mas'ud said, we used to say, peace be on Allah. Okay, so what does it mean? I say, assalamu ala Allah. So I am giving Allah peace. Subhanallah. He is the source of peace. He is the source of peace. <laughs> Uh, sisters, I think you are busy with the comments and chatting. Uh, yani, please keep the, your questions at the end of the class. I'll give you a few, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes for the questions, inshallah. Tayyip, just if you you are you don't know which page, you can post which page. Okay. So when you say peace be open Allah, what is the meaning of that? Allah doesn't need the peace because He is giving peace, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah doesn't fear anyone. Okay, imagine I, I'm sitting in a, a non-Muslim country and I am afraid. Then someone said, Assalamu alaikum, then I feel the comfort. Allah doesn't need that, subhanahu, because He is the all power, subhanahu, the all strong. He doesn't fear anyone. So as I mean, this is wrong. So that's why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, uh, uh, told them not to say assalamu ala Allah. Okay, what is the relationship between this uh, and uh, and the book of Tawheed? This means, sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa taala is perfect. So when you say, uh, yeah, and this is part of Tawheed, to believe in the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa taala is complete perfect. 
So when you say assalamu ala Allah, as if you are saying that Allah is not perfect. Astaghfirullah al -Azim. So part of the Tawheed, to say, uh, part of the Tawheed, not to say assalamu ala Allah. Assalamu ala Allah. Okay. We go to the next chapter, chapter 52, page 381. The prohibition of saying, oh Allah, forgive me, if you wish. Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, none of you should say, oh Allah, forgive me if you wish. Oh Allah, be merciful to me if you wish. But he should always appeal to Allah with determination for nobody can force Allah to do something against him, his will. There is another narration raised by Muslim with a different wording that reads, one must ask Allah with a will and full devotion, for nothing is hard for Allah to do. Bukhari, Muslim. Tayyip. This is, subhanAllah, very important. Yeah, because if you remember, sisters, that this book is a very important book. Uh, of course, I don't mean this is a perfect book. Everything is correct. Every single letter is correct. For sure, he is a human being, the one who wrote this book. Tayyip, but genuinely, know that it's an amazing book. This book talks about the major shirk, the minor shirk, and also the things can decrease your tawheed. Okay? So this is one of the points in your dua. Uh, I don't know if this is common but, uh, in, your, in your country, uh, but uh, here in Kuwait, this is very common mistake. Very common mistake. Yeah, and for example, uh, someone is asking me, uh, uh, yani, how are you? What you are doing? Well, Alhamdulillah, I am building my house. So my friend will say immediately, uh, "May Allah make it easy for you, Inshallah. Allah is helping, Inshallah." Tayyib. Sorry. Alhamdulillah. So many times you find people saying, Inshallah, Ya Rab, Allah is Sahelik Imtihan, Inshallah, Allah is Sahelik, Inshallah, Allah is Sahelik, Inshallah. Okay, this is very common in Kuwait. Very common in Kuwait. Tayyib, I don't know about your, your side. Tayyib, uh, so the Prophet mentioned that and, uh, as a mistake. Okay, what is the point that when you say, oh Allah, forgive me, if you will, oh Allah, help me, if you will? No, but yeah, them. Be sure in your dua. Why? Because no one can force Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means if Allah wants, I will do that. I say, inshallah, for my actions, if I'm planning to do something tomorrow, yeah, for, or, or in the future. So for example, sisters, next week, the class will be this and this. I should say, inshallah. Why? Because I don't know. I don't know. Like, like today, subhanAllah, I don't know. Uh, I was planning to move from Saudi after Fajr and I reached Kuwait Dhuhr. Um, but subhanAllah, something happened, we late. So that's why I'm giving the class here from, from the car. Uh, okay. Uh, so as a human being, we should say inshallah about our actions because we are not able to do everything. We don't know the future. We don't know the unseen. We are weak. Okay, we are not, uh, our life is not perfect. But about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the all perfect, subhanahu wa ta'ala, all strong. If he wants anything, subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can stop him. So when you invoke Allah, sisters, you need something from Allah, so be sure in your dua. Allahumma ghfir li. Allahumma rhamni. Allah forgive me. Oh Allah, have me, have mercy on me. Oh Allah, make the exam easy for me. Make the pregnancy easy for me. Make, uh, grant me a, a, a righteous husband or guide my husband. Like that. Be sure in your dua. Why? No one can force Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe some of, you is one, some of you are wondering about the dua in Ramadan. Okay. What do we say after iftar, sisters? 
What do we say after the iftar? After we break fast? What do we say? You don't know. Tayyip. ذهب الضمأ. Yes. ذهب الضمأ. وابتلت العرق. وثبت الأجر. Inshallah. Okay. Here we said, Inshallah. How? Tayyip, this is dua. Yes. يعني, uh, generally, this is as an invocation. But what is the statement? وثبت الأجر. The edge is fixed. The reward is fixed. Uh, so now, when you mention something, you are you are affirming that you should be careful. Then you should say, "Insha'Allah." Okay. So I'm not asking Allah. Oh Allah, give us, uh, grant us the reward of fasting. No, I'm saying the reward of fasting is fixed. Here you should say, "Insha'Allah." So now, what is the point to 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 add this chapter in Kitab Tawheed, because if you say, Inshallah in your dua, or if Allah wills, if Allah wills, as if you don't believe in the perfection and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is lack of your Tawheed. طيب. I stop here, sisters. And now, if you have questions. Where's my time? Now you can write your questions, please. Okay. Do you have questions? I cannot read the question. Okay. Can we give name a head to a kid? Uh, uh, sorry, I, I I forgot. Well, I said about this uh, name, but I forgot. Inshallah, if I remember, I, inshallah, I will post this. Inshallah. Uh, yes, repeat about inshallah. If you mention a statement, it is not a dua. You are mentioning a fact. Okay, or let's say affirming the reward from Allah, then you should say, Insha'Allah. The dua is fixed. The dua, I affirming the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not allowed. You should add what? Insha'Allah. So you want to say, Subhanallah. Anytime you can say, Subhanallah. Or when you say something, when, sorry, when you see something nice, you say, Subhanallah. In the salah, you say subhanallah like this. In many places, you can say subhanallah. Usually, we add abdul and amatul before Allah names. Can we? Okay. Uh, what about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To, to add abdul, okay, no problem. Abdullah, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Aziz, Abdul Malik, Abdul Wahab, Abdul Mannan, Amatul Rahman, Amatul Mannan. Okay, no problem with that. This is good. This is good. And uh, you'll find some scholars mention this is one, one of the best way to name your children. Abd, then you put one of the names of Allah. But what do I mean? I, of course, I don't mean it's haram to add Abdul. No, no. What do I mean? That some names, you can use them without Abdul. Like, I have a new baby. So can I name him Abdul Kareem? Yes. Can I name him Kareem? Yes. Can I name him Rahim? Yes. Can I name him Abdul Rahim? Yes. Okay? Some of the names, not all of them. What if you say, oh Allah, make it happen if it is good for me? Oh, okay, no problem. Like, you know, this is this is okay. Like Dua Sikhar. What do we say in Dua Sikhar? Allahumma in kana hadha shay. Khair fi dini wa No problem. No problem. You can't, you can't say that. In India, people say, Allahumma laka. Sumt. Wabika Amant. Yes, some scholars mentioned this dua, but uh, as I know, Allah, this is uh, Allah, this is not authentic dua. This is not authentic dua for iftar. But if people are doing, they believe this authentic dua, okay, they can do. So when we make dua, should we say, inshallah? No, don't say inshallah in your dua. 
Don't say inshallah in your dua. Can we name our cat Iblis? <laughs> Why? You hate your cat? Iblis, subhanallah. Yani, you want this cat with you at home and you name this cat Iblis? Ajib Allah. When to say, subhanallah, how do we greet a non Muslim? How are you? Don't start with the salam alaikum. Don't start with the salam alaikum. And if there is no, no, if there is no need to greet him, don't greet him. I walk in the street in a non-Muslim country. I die. I'm sure that the people are non-Muslims. What is the point to greet them? Oh, oh, so leave them. But you know, sometimes you are working in a place, and your colleagues non-Muslims, and you need to start them with something. How are you? Hope you are doing well. How was your health? Okay, like this. Should we say Amin and not Inshallah after some make? You can say Amin. Yes, after your dua, you can say Amin. Allah can we give name Aziz? Yes, for the boy. And India people say okay. To say salam without say assalamu. <laughs> Wallahi, uh, it came in the Quran salam without assalamu alaikum. The angels. Say to Ibrahim alayhi salam, Qalu salama, Qalu salam, Qalu salam, Qalu salam, So they said salam, and also he replied salam. So Allahu alam, Allah, this means it is allowed. But no doubt, to be safe, you say assalamu alaikum. You say assalamu alaikum. Can we say safar salama, inshallah, or just say, Safar Salama. Safar Salama. Wallah uh, Adam, if you mean, if you mean, uh, may Allah uh, grant you a safe journey without, inshallah. But, uh, Yani, um, I don't know how to say it. So keep it as a dua and without, inshallah. Without, inshallah. Ya, sat ya Sattar. Uh, as a name, Allah Alam, it is not there. Sattar is not one of the names of Allah that we know. What is there? As-Sattir or As-Sattir. As-Sattir. As satir or as satir, so you you call him by as satir, or as satir. I want to know the book name that you are referring. Maybe someone can share this. Inshallah, my sister's non son Abdul Ahad, but called Ahad. Is it okay? Allahu alam. When we meet someone or have a discussion, can we give raz? For example, when talking about an L person. May Allah give shifa. Yes, yes, this is good. Alhamdulillah. You make dua for him. You mention someone. Can I read Quran in phone? Yes, you can read. Sheikh doesn't ask someone to make dua for us go against tawakkul. No, 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 no. It doesn't go against tawakkul. No. For example, if I know you are a, a good woman, you are half the Quran, you are righteous, pious, good wife for your husband, good daughter. Okay, so I, I I tell you, please make dua for me. I am sick. No problem with that. This will not, uh, it doesn't oppose the tawakkul. Sheikh, last time you mentioned a hadith that you said was incorrect and the writer must have made a mistake. So do we have to check every hadith of this book as a single mistake means that there can be any... Uh, look, sisters, yani, uh, the way of the scholars, they study this book. They teach this book. They, uh, not only this book, also other books, Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, many books, alhamdulillah. But for talib al-ilm, yani you are, inshallah, talib al-ilm. All of you, inshallah, you are students, knowledge. So it, it is nice and it is important that you read this book, the Virgin with you, and also you, you read other explanations of the book of Tawheed. And when I started to study Kitab Tawheed, this was maybe 
uh, let's say before 27 years. So I, I, I used to go to the library, the bookstore, and if I find any sharh, an explanation, I buy this sharh. If there is a new book, I'll buy. Why? I like to compare. And I want to check what do they say about the hadith? Is it authentic hadith, not authentic hadith? Or maybe there is one word. This is important. But gener generally, يعني, inshallah, we can trust what the scholars mission. Uh, I should not be very sensitive about every single word. But, you know, the scholars, ch they check after the other scholars. Like Al-Bukhari, one of the greatest scholars of the Muslim Ummah. But you'll find many scholars checked this book after him. What is the difference between Al-Afu and Al-Ghafur? Al-Afu and Al-Ghafur, we mentioned this in the last, uh, before two weeks, okay, I had in my YouTube channel, inshallah, you can find this uh, class uh, about the name Al-Afu. Al-Ghafur, -Al the name Al-Ghafur, the old forgiving, subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the origin of this word? From Al-Maghfirah, to cover. Okay, this is to cover. This is my hand, so I cover my hand. This is maghfirah. Okay? But to erase... So, sorry. Al-Afu. Uh, Al-Afu. This is Al-Afu. Okay? Something written here. Then I erase it. This is Afu. Okay? So there is a difference. Is there is this difference. What is the difference when you come to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You'll find some scholars saying that... If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the maghfira, this means Allah will not punish you. And Allah will not mention this sin. It is covered. The, the sin is there, but he will not expose you. He will not mention this sin. But al-afu, Allah will erase the sin, but it is, there is a possibility that Allah will mention that. What do I mean? Yeah, for example, if you sent me uh, if you write, for example, a question, not nice a question. Okay, it was, يعني, I felt يعني, like it was an aggressive way. Yeah, not nice. One of the sisters. So uh, then I say, خلاص. I do Afu. There was one sister, خلاص, uh, but I'm doing Afu uh, that she said a bad word to me. Uh, this was not nice. She should not do. She should not say this word. So I'm mentioning this sin or this mistake. So I said I I did afu, but I'm blaming you. While maghfira, the forgiveness, I'm not mentioning this in front of people. Halas, the sin is there. There is pain here, but I covered that. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to forgive us and to pardon us. Jazakumullah khair, sisters. And sorry, I think there, there are some questions I did not answer. You can send your questions to my Instagram, my uh, email, my anything, inshallah. If there's a chance, I will answer your questions. Jazakumullah khair. See you, inshallah, next week. See you, inshallah. Here I say, inshallah. This is not a dua. Okay? See you, inshallah, next week. May Allah protect you. Okay? Here I don't say, inshallah. This is dua. May Allah protect you. I don't say, inshallah. Because this is dua. See you next week. This is not dua, so I say inshallah. You got it, inshallah, sisters? Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.